Johnny Dollar. Well, hi, old Johnny. Hmm? This is your old cousin Luther. Cousin Luther? Luther Penarol, Nashville. Oh, sure. Four State Insurance Company. How are you, Lou? Tolerable, Johnny. Tolerable. <laughs> but ooh, if I got me a problem. What kind of problem? A Henry's Sweetwater problem on account of the accident policy we sold him. Well, if you sold him a policy and he's had an accident, I'm afraid you're stuck with it. Yeah? Even if that accident was on purpose? Oh? Yes, sir. I think that old man Sweetwater is trying to take us, that's what. And if you can come on down here and prove it, Johnny, well, that's proud, you know. Okay, Luther. I'm on my way. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Nashville, Tennessee office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Hood of Death matter. Expense account item one, 580 for a cab to Bradley Field. Item two, 5836 plane fare. Thanks to a good air connection from New York, it was only a few minutes after noon when we circled in over Nashville, passing the tower of station WLAC. Nashville is a beautiful city, set in a bowl-shaped valley surrounded by lush, wooded hills that straddles the Cumberland River, retaining its quiet, old South charm. We landed at Berry Field Airport. Item three, $1.70 for a cab into the Dinkler Andrew Jackson Hotel, where I parked my luggage, then a couple of minutes later met Luther Pennyroyal in front of his office. Thank you, sir. Okay, now, Johnny. This cheap, chiseling, conniving client of ours is an old crook by the name of Mr. Henry Sweetwater. Don't let that name fool you. Why a crook, Lou? Well, he made himself a pile of money with a lot of snide property deals. Mm -hmm. Used to say that if you could outsmart Sweetwater, you could outsmart the devil himself. And it's true. Oh, I see. And knowing how he'd try and cheat us. Maybe I was wrong in writing up an accident policy with all the special clauses he demanded. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of an accident he had? Well, he said he was hit by a car down to where he lives. I take it you don't believe it, no, sir? I think he faked it just to get his hand back in again and outsmart somebody. And she had a doctor look him over? Yes, sure. And on account of he carried his little act too far, he did get a busted arm. Well, just well, the well, same, well, I, mean... man, I just don't believe it was any accident. And Doc Carraway don't neither. And all the extra stuff that he's claiming, and, and, and when you see him and talk to him and see what a conniving old fox he is, you won't think so neither. All right, then why don't we go see him? We are, Johnny. Here's my car. Get in. What's the name of this town? Laverne, did you say, Lou? That's right, about ten more miles. Old Sweetwater's home. You keep calling him old. How old is he? Seventy-seven. Oh, Lives alone, does he? No, sir. He's married to the prettiest young gal you ever did see. He is, huh? And I'll tell you this, too, Johnny. If he hadn't come along with all his money, I would have tried to marry up with Bill and May myself. Wait a minute, Lou. Uh, there could be a familiar pattern there. You think she might have married him for his money? You all want the truth? I really believe she did. In other words, if he were to have a fatal accident... Oh, now, listen, Johnny. You're trying to say that Bill and May Rich could Rich be... old man with a pretty young wife that's happened before, you know. No, she couldn't. Don't be too sure. Maybe she did marry him for money. She's staying with him on account of she loves him. Well, we'll see. And I guess that's the only reason I haven't gotten hitched up with her sister, Patty Jane. What do you mean? Now, Patty Jane wants money, too, in addition to what they give her to live on. Wait a minute. If she, too, would benefit if something happens to him... No, well... no, no, Johnny. She's just a kind of member of the family, and she... No. no what's the matter with this car? Maybe a bad plug? Yeah. Anyhow, the reason I called you is I think old Sweetwater knows I'm wise to him, see? And if he does, Johnny, there is nothing but nothing that old rascal wouldn't do to keep me from proving he's trying... Now, now what is the matter with Ooh. this thing? Listen, you all hear that funny sound? Pull off the road, Lou. Come on, pull over. Hurry. Sounds like it's under the hood. Just don't talk. Stop her. All right, come on. Now, let's get that hood up. Oh, sure. Sure, Johnny. If you like. All right, now, let's see here. Well, what's all the excitement about? There it is. Here, now. I got it. Right through it. Oh, boy. 
bomb. That was a bomb? Yeah. Neatly wired up to your ignition. Come on, Lou. Let's get down there and see him. Only a bit more now, Johnny. Boy, am I shook up. It was a close call. I told you, Johnny, if he ever got wise that I was wise to him, something like this might happen. Well, we'll be there soon. Now, go on now, Lou. You were telling me about Sweetwater's so-called accident. Uh Uh-huh. Well, he claims that after the car hit him, he just lay there at the bottom of his hill until Bill and May come driving up two, three hours later from shopping up to Nashville. Mm -hmm. So, on top of his broken arm, he's claiming shock, disability, and everything else he can think of. But what I'm going to claim after what happened back there, well, you just wait. Doesn't make any sense, though, Lou. It don't, huh? Oh, well, you see. Who would have wired that thing up for him? Who is this Dr. Carraway you mentioned? Even older than Sweetwater. Used to be an off sale path. But I'll say this for him. Yeah. When he couldn't find any sign of an accident, no tire marks or nothing, well, he's the one called me up. And then when Sweetwater wouldn't give us some real facts about the accident, or how come he didn't hear the car coming at him, or how come he didn't take a look at it when it hit him, if it was a car that hit him, well, then I knew he was faking it. Now, look, right about here, just before we turn up the hill to the house, is where he says it happened. Mm-hmm. That's a nice modern house up there. Two-car garage, hmm? One for Bella May and one for Patty Jane to use when she comes to visit. And, and you see that smoke out of that chimney? From a fireplace this time of year? Even this time of year. The old coot just sits there in front of his fire, figuring out ways... <laughs> ever happened to you? You're driving down a long highway or working late, and then monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up with No Dose. No Dose keeps you alert with the same safe refresher found in coffee. Yet No Dose is faster, handier, more reliable, absolutely not habit forming. The safe way to stay alert without harmful stimulants. No Dose. not only blew out the chimney end of the living room, but the force of it stopped our car in its tracks. Fortunately, there was no fire, only a rain of bricks, mortar, and glass. Then as we jumped out of the car, we saw him tottering through what was left of the front door. Johnny, look, that's him, old Henry Sweetwater. He's still on his feet. Uh Uh-oh, not anymore. Come on. Well, he's still alive. We've got to get him to a doctor. Within two minutes, not only Dr. Carraway, but half the population of Laverne were there. They'd heard the explosion and come running. The doctor and I carried Henry Sweetwater upstairs and put him to bed. The doctor said Sweetwater was going to be okay, so Lou and I went downstairs and looked around for the cause of the explosion. Dynamite. That's what it was, Dr. Carraway. Yes, sir, Mr. Dollar. You're right, it was dynamite. I could smell it clean as day the minute I got here. Same as you did. Apparently, Doctor, it went off right here in the fireplace. But why it didn't kill him, I can't understand. Well, because he wasn't sitting right in front of it. Well, how do you know, Johnny? Bits of his clothing in the doorway to the kitchen. See? Must have lighted the fire, decided to get something in the kitchen. Made it far enough to save his being blown to bits. Mm, you're right. And you see, Johnny? See what? He waited till he saw us come in, threw in the dynamite, then got far enough away so it wouldn't hurt him too bad. Uh, Mr. Dollar, you think that he did it? No, I certainly don't. Lou, that that cockeyed theory about his trying to hurt himself is just exactly that, completely cockeyed. Somebody is out to get him. Mm, Looks that way now. But why, Johnny? I don't know yet. Do you? Or you, Doctor? No, sir. And if that same person planted the bomb that we found in Lou's car... Bomb, sir? Apparently to keep Lou and me from getting here. Or maybe... Maybe it was meant for you, Johnny. Well, that's a possibility, I guess. Anyhow, as soon as Mr. Sweetwater comes to, I want to ask him a few things. Well, now, uh, that may not be for quite a while now. Why not, Doctor? Well, you see, I gave him a little sedative. But uh, just a weak one on of his heart. Oh. 
He has a heart condition? No, no, not, uh, not really. Not bad. But a man of his age... Not good, neither. You all ask me if a shock of all this don't bring on another heart attack. Well, I just, I just hope it don't kill him. But now, Johnny... Yeah? I still don't get it. If he himself didn't set off that dynamite, being all locked up alone in here, who did? That's a good question, Lou. And he had been locked inside that house. It was the first thing I checked on. Doors, windows, everything. And there were dead latches on the doors that had to have been locked from the inside. Unless, of course, there was somebody with a key who might... Yes, somebody with a key. Only one got a key is Miss Billy May's own wife and her sister, Miss Patty. Tell me this, Doctor. Did he always lock himself in when he was alone here? You mean all them dead latch locks he put on uh, when he first come here? Yes. No, sir. After he got to know the place and the neighbor folk, why, Henry was always hoping they'd drop in and keep him company. Mm -hmm. The place was always wide open. In other words, he was afraid of something today or someone. Someone that come here and actually try to kill him? Didn't somebody try it with a car? But Johnny, like I say, with him alone here, and the only one who could plant that dynamite. Oh, wait, now. You all suppose somebody could have called on him before and put in a device? A timer, you mean, to set it off? No, no, Doctor, there'd have been traces of it. But don't you see what you're doing then, Johnny? You're saying that he himself had to throw that stick of dynamite in there. Wait a minute, sir. Maybe he did. And try to kill himself? No. No, I'm thinking of an old trick of the 49ers, Doctor, during the gold rush days in California, where dynamite was plentiful. What? A common trick to get rid of a claim jumper was... Come on, Lou. We're going to take a look at the woodpile. Woodpile? That's right. Come on. We found them. Half a dozen logs that somebody had gone to work on with a brace and bit. Bored a hole in each one, lengthwise, pushed in a stick of dynamite, then plugged up the end. Hey, you just look there, Johnny. They're all right here together, where somebody could sneak them out without disturbing the rest of the pile. And then plant them on top so the old man would pick them up and take them inside. All right, then, Lou. All we have to find out now is who. Because if he's tried to murder the old man twice, he'll try it again. He, Johnny. He, she, whoever it is. got back in from the woodpile, Billy May had come home. And I make no bones about it. Up till then, she'd been my number one suspect. But as I watched her there, caring for him with a gentleness and devotion that you couldn't fake, and then talked with her later. And I've telephoned my sister, Patty Jane, Mr. Dollar, to come on up here. Oh? Yes, sir. Uh, you see, Patty's done some nursing. Uh, between us, we can watch over Henry every single minute until he's all well again. Well, that's a good idea, Mrs. Sweetwater. Oh, just call me Billy May, please. All right, Billy May. Oh, and I, I sure am glad that, that Dr. Carraway got here so soon. Well, half the town was here within minutes. Well, if he isn't much of a doctor anymore, he's a sweet old man, and I think it's just fine of him to let bygones be bygones and take care of Henry this way. Bygones be... Oh, oh you know, I, I better go on up again and, and make sure he's comfortable. Oh, oh and, and Johnny? Yes? 
with Dr. Carraway gone home for supper and, and with Luther Fenneral gone back to Nashville. Though I don't know why with Patty Jane coming. <laughs> well, after what's happened, if, if maybe you'd stay around a while, even after Patty gets here. Sure, I'll be glad to. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to meet Fatty Jane because she, too, would reap substantial benefits from Henry Sweetwater's death. She arrived, and although she was a good deal like Billy May in many ways, young, attractive, well-spoken, there were important differences. This was a cool, calculating, practical one. Her care of the old man was calm, quiet, efficient, but I didn't feel for a minute that she really liked him. And when Billy May had gone upstairs to rest a while, and we sat there in what was left of the living room... Of course, I wouldn't weep too much if he died, Johnny. But that isn't going to keep you from caring for him just as well as I can. Well, I hope not. Um, is he still unconscious? Oh, yes. He, he, he's been wide awake several times. I wish I'd known that. But now he's gone back to sleep again. Did you say you wish you'd known? Well, a few things, a few people that I wanted to ask him about. Oh, I see. Do you, Patty? Johnny, you know who he thinks run him down the other day? Who, Patty? Me. You? Why? Well, because of Billy May, he's been real good to me, Johnny. And I'll be one of his beneficiaries. It isn't true, Johnny, but I believe he thinks I'd do most anything to get hold of that money. So I could be independent of him. So I could go off and marry Luther Penrose and and still live the way I like to. You and, uh, you and Lou still like each other, hmm? We would have gotten married, Johnny, if Lou or me had ever had any money. And maybe when Henry does die, Lou was going to be a botanist, you know, if he hadn't had enough to finish college. He still wants to be. Mm -hmm. But instead he's had to, uh, settle for the insurance business, hmm? Yes. But he knows that you'll come into money someday. Yes, and then maybe we can... Now, wait a minute, Johnny. What do you mean by that? Motive, Patty. You mean for trying to kill Henry? Luther? Now, listen, Johnny. All right, now, tell me this. Was there some kind of trouble between Henry and Dr. Carraway? Well, yes, sure, of course there was. But from the way that he's caring for Henry now, that's forgotten. But, Johnny... What kind of trouble was it? Oh, Dr. Carraway felt that Henry skinned him out of some money once. And I guess he did. Henry skinned a lot of people out of a lot of things. But now, listen. Now, tell me, uh, when is the doctor coming back again? Sometime tonight, he said, but it might be late. Well, then, Patty, um, since Lou took his car with him, I'd like to borrow yours. Well, of course, Johnny. But but now, listen, please. Uh, I'll about uh, Lou see you later. <laughs> I did a lot of thinking during that drive back to Nashville. Suspects? All of them had a motive. Patty and Billy May would inherit a fortune. Lou, then married to Patty, would be set up for life. And old Doc Carraway, regardless of how well he was behaving now, he had a score to settle with Henry because of money. Wait, though. Could one of the girls have run him down with a car? Well, maybe so. But then rigged the dynamite in that firewood? Hardly. But young Lou? Or an old osteopath with strong hands? Maybe again. As for the bomb in the car, though. Now, let's see. My first step was to stop at Lou's apartment. He wasn't in. All the better. I slipped the lock, went over the place inch by inch. No sign of dynamite or anything even remotely connected with it. But I did learn that Lou was keeping up his interest in botany. Some exotic plants that he kept there under glass. And one of them? Familiar. All too familiar. I grabbed the phone book and finally got hold of a doctor who was willing to drive down to Laverne with me despite the late hour. I only hope it doesn't embarrass Dr. Carraway for me to look in on his patient, Mr. Dollar. Well, as I told you, uh, Dr. Bradley, Carraway is quite old and semi-retired. Well, that's the only reason I've come. The thing I'm most worried about, Doctor, is the effect of this whole thing on Mr. Sweetwater's heart. Because I understand... Yes, Mr. Dollar? Yes, it was Lou Pennyroyal who planted that idea. What? No, never mind. Uh, Here we are. And uh, that's the house, right up there. 
Yeah. Look, not only Dr. Carraway's, but Lou's car is there again. Come on, Dr. Bradley. Let's get in there. Since that dynamite didn't work, let's hope there hasn't been time for something else. Oh, Johnny. Yes, uh, this is Dr. Horace oh, Bradley, Oh, Johnny, Patty. it's too late. What? Dr. Carraway's up there with him now. Yes, Johnny, it looks like the end for poor old Henry. Too late, hmm? His heart, Johnny, just a little while ago. If only you'd still been Dr. here. Dr. Bradley. Yes? Up those stairs. First door on the right. Yes, darling. All right, now look, what happened? Well, all evening we've been looking in on him. Every few minutes, taking care of him. What do you mean by we? Billy May and Lou and me. Mm-hmm. And every time he took his medicine, he looked just fine, Johnny. But then, a few minutes ago, when I went up again... Yes? Oh, Johnny, I could see right away it was a heart attack. You couldn't? Yeah. And, and poor little Billy May is prostrated. Heart attack, huh? But Dr. Carraway says it is, too. Well, I say that he's wrong. Dr. Bradley? Dr. Bradley, listen to me, Doctor. I know, I know it looks like a heart attack, Dr. Carraway, but we'd better be sure. Well, I am absolutely sure. Well, I'm not. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Dr. Bradley, listen to me, please. Yes. If you've an antidote, any kind of treatment for aconite poison, use it immediately. Aconite? Yes. Aconitum nopellus? That's right, the stuff that's made out of a monkshood plant. Did you say monkshood? Oh, of course. I should have thought of it. That red face, the, the protuberant veins, impaired vision, the trouble in breathing. Then it isn't a heart attack? No, not if Mr. Dollar's hunch is right. Billy May, Dr. Bradley is sure now that he can pull him through. Oh, thank God. Uh, Patty, did, uh, did she go along with Lou when the police came to pick him up? No, she, she's in her room, but... Well, she, she'll get over it. I hope so. She's a nice kid. But how did you know, Johnny, about that poison Lou slipped Henry with his medicine? Well, Billy May, I found the monks with plants at his apartment. You know, when you're in this business a while, you learn these things. When I got back here and found Henry had what looked like a heart attack... Well, it turned out that way. Aconite poisoning. Oh. But, Johnny, what about that bomb in Lou's own car? He put it there himself, Billy May. For the same reason he called me in, just to cuddle up. Goodness. But it, it could have killed him and you. Well, Lou was very careful to call my attention to the sound of that bomb long before it went off. He knew we had plenty of time to stop the car and get rid of it. Now. Yes? Now he's going to have plenty of time to think it over. So, here's another one for the courts. I hope they throw the book at Lou. A crooked insurance man is the lowest order of operator in this racket of mine. Thank goodness they come few and far between. Expense account total, including incidentals. Let's make it 200 even. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a story based on the impossible that is scientific fact. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Do you like a car with plenty of pep? A car with reserve power for safe passing? Most good drivers do. But they don't like to pay extra for premium gasoline. Listen, in three out of five cars, regular-priced Sinclair Dino gasoline matches performance of premium gasoline. Saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair Dinosaur sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson, music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Herb Duncan, Bill Adams, Madeline Sherwood, Vicki Bola, and Jackson Beck. Hello, this is George Bazan. Anyone within the sound of my voice can save right now on a new Ford from Cartwright's. Thanks, George. 
Cartwright Sales and Service, 108th Street and 5th Avenue in Troy, has pledged the sale of 300 additional new Fords over and above their big standard quota already in stock. It means you may buy a new Ford Falcon paying as little as $42.50 a month. Live it up with the lively ones from Cartwright. Cartwright Sales and Service, 108th Street and 5th Avenue in Troy. Here's the weather forecast for the Capital District. Warm and humid tonight and Monday with scattered showers and thunder showers and some chance of a severe thunderstorm or a tornado with large hail and damaging winds this evening until about 9 p.m. Low temperatures tonight in the 60s, the highest Monday in the 80s. At 6 o'clock, the temperature at the Albany Airport was 75, having dropped considerably since then with a thunder shower in the area. Humidity, 85%. At row 59 on your Five Cities dial, this is WROW Music, serving the Capital District of Albany, Troy, and Schenectady. Stay tuned for Suspense, next on WROW Music. The time is 6.35.